Guys, look tell us something about the future rice right? <laughs> especially 2.5, and he's got up till and not including five. I only made the slides uh, a few hours ago during uh, some of the sessions. Yeah, so um, where do you get this kind of information if you want to keep keep on top of uh, things happening in Ansible? Obviously, you can follow the IRC channel and go to I Ansible meetings, but that's probably not feasible because they happen at hours that are not very uh, useful here. If you, I, I spend a lot of time during the nights when I have to get things done um, just because of this. Um, but if you want to just keep on top of things by uh, looking at, yeah, you can go to the Ansible Fest developers or contribute to meetings, but you only get invited if you already spend some time with Ansible. Um, but the roadmap is a nice one because this is actually everything that Red Hat is committed to do. Um, committed to do because they promised it or committed to do because they want to do it. It doesn't necessarily mean that it will happen for version 2.5, but they at least want to get it done at 2.5. So the roadmap is very interesting because we get an insight in what they want to deliver for the next release. And the nice thing about the roadmap, and I will open it, <coughs> is also that they have the deadlines already included in there. So if you have, want to know, if you want to get some module in there, or you want to get some new functionality in the next version of Ansible, it's that roadmap you have to look at. Um, because the dates can change. Let me see if I can... Uh, why, 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 why? Uh, yeah, it opened it up here. Can't move it to the other screen, and it will probably then show it correctly if I could. Mm. This will be it. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> you'll keep full screen. Yeah, I'm going to change it. So maybe take all your laptop and go to the URL and you can see it properly. Yeah. So, you can see here that uh, the next, well, the core has to be freezed at the 14th of January, together with the core modules and the creative modules, so if you want to change something in there and you want to have it in 2.5, you will have to hurry up. Uh, the community modules have two weeks extra, and the thing is, if it happens as it did in the past, usually they, they only fork the next 2.5 stable uh, tree, at the, the 31st of January, actually some time later, um, when they create the first release candidate. They are not going to fork it sooner because that creates much more effort in keeping things in, in, in sync because they have to backport stuff to that stable tree. So actually they only start forking when they have to, when they create the first release candidate. So usually you have some more days after the 31st of January, I learned. Which is nice because you work to the deadline and then you know that not everything is the way you would like it to have. But you think, oh, well, it's too late now and then apparently you still have some time to fix some things. Um, oh. what, uh, what, what can you find in here? All the stuff, some of these stuff I'm going to talk about, but you see a lot of small items. And some config is one that uh, I didn't include in the presentation, but it's, it's interesting. I don't know if people have heard of Ansible config. It's in 2.4, it's a way to change configuration items, well, config, the configuration of Ansible. Um, what they're going to do, and what actually was the plan from the beginning, was that the config file was no longer an any file, but actually a YAML file. It's something that you can actually, uh, you, you can expect the format to be something. The any file format for Ansible, uh, the config file from Ansible was already, I think, proper any. But for instance, the host of any file is not an any format. It's strange because the any format is a keyword equals value, and the host of any file does not conform to it, so you cannot check if the, the syntax is correct for the host of any file. But the config file from Ansible is a is correct any file. But it's going to be replaced with a, a YAML formatted uh, config file. That's going to be very interesting. Something I didn't mention in the Windows presentation is that none of the stuff from Windows can be configured in Ansible.cfg. And we are waiting to do it properly until we have a YAML configuration file. 
So we didn't want to introduce it in ansible.config if it has to be replaced with a new, uh, new structure anyway. But there you have it. Um, so, let's go back to the... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just take this. Take this. Move it here. I don't know why I made it so small. And... Can't make it smaller here, what? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can move the sidebar and click away those screens. Sorry. Yeah, but if you're not. If you now put it in the slideshow. Uh, yeah, I want to make it smaller. Is it control minus? No. Normally it's somewhere yeah. here yeah. below, yeah. but it's not. Uh, ah! Okay. It's view. It's a real view or zoom. zoom. Where do you see it? Ah, view view on your up here, yeah. yeah, yeah. And all the apples. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ah, there we go. Yay! <laughs> so, um, there is something else that is also new in version 2.5, in the development process of version 2.5. Uh, let me show you that as well. And it's very strange that GitHub called it projects, but you have on top here projects and not a lot of project that I know, uh, open source projects use it, but now we're using it for, uh, for Ansible as well. And so you have a project called version 2.5. And the nice thing about this is it's actually a Kanban board where you can see which items are being deferred, so none. Uh, but you can also see which ones are, I cannot, uh, the ones that are stretched means it's stretched over multiple versions. So it's possibly it's not finished by 2.5, but it will be taken into 2.6 or 2.7. And sometimes some of the functionality is already there, and some of it isn't yet. Uh, but here you can see the to-do, what they're working on, um, and what is in testing, and what is already done. And you can see that the Windows team is actually using this. I don't know why I can't scroll down, because there obviously is a lot of stuff down here. Jesus. You see, it's very, very strange. Anyway, there are lots of items there that you can see which are already covered, and it's nice to see because these are actually new functionality, uh, and you can see the discussion because these are actually either pull requests or issues. Now, I told you already that if you look at the documentation and you want to see the new documentation, you have to change uh, the, the link on top. So, for instance, like I told you, Windows, Ansible, you get the intro page of Ansible. I'm not going to mention our sponsor now. But I am on the... Ah, here, here it is. Um, where is my... Oh. I've been asked to make a comment about Linux on the desktop, shall I do that? No. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's how... Uh, well, this is the URL. So if you go to this one, you go to... You see this is the old URL, which no longer fits. I don't know why Google still has this one, because it's, I think, a few months old already. Uh, yeah. And then if you go... You will see that you go to the latest, which does not have... This is the old Windows documentation, which is not very good. And you have to here go to Dell. I think there is a button somewhere on the left that you cannot see, well, I don't know where it is, but if you switch this to devil, you will see that they still left that page into place, but they set this page as in split up, and you go to the Windows Guides, and here you see the new documentation. So for the newer stuff, you always have to go to the devil, uh, the devil copy of, uh, of the documentation. Voila, let's go back to the presentation. So that's where you can find the new stuff. Can I move to the next page? Ah. So, there is something new. The new loop syntax. Um, you're used to with items. You, you probably use it often or with dict or with uh, all of the other stuff. 
Did you know that the, 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 the width construction is actually powered by a lookup plugin underneath it? So if you do width underscore blob, you're actually calling the blob lookup plugin and you provide the, the stuff that, that, that is behind it, the list that is behind it, or items that are behind it, to that lookup plugin. And what you get back is actually fed into the task. Um, the, the problem with it, obviously, is that the width underscore construct doesn't show you that it's actually a lookup plugin. And there could be, I think we now have about 30 or 40 lookup plugins and new plugins are being added. And for each of these you can do width underscore something, which doesn't help lint, uh, Ansible lint either, because it has to know in advance what possibilities are there, to know that this is a valid construction. So that, is, that has to go. And the new way of working is at least easier. Well, it's from an engineering point of view, it's, it's, it's better. <laughs> Let's put it like that. So um, it looks like uh, it looks like this. So before you would do something like this with items, followed by a list, and this is actually the Jinja. Uh, this, this generates a list with the, with the Jinja uh, template, but it could be obviously a list uh, underneath. In the new way of working, it works the same. It's but it's called loop. Whether that's better, I don't know. But with dicts then, it's no longer possible. You have to say loop, and then call the lookup plugin with Jinja. And then provide the, the, the arguments that are needed for the lookup plugin. This is how it will be working in the future. Which does not look better from a user point of view. No. Exactly. Exactly. Um, for other stuff as well, here it was very simple, because this is considered a string by YAML, so you don't have to quote anything. You will have to quote here and you have to double quote. So there, you can expect problems if you have to add more quotes as well. Not only does it look better, but it also doesn't it's speak what it does. No. Many people have difficulty enough understanding what items. I know. So the old way of working, we always said with Ansible that a playbook should be a written out description of what should be done. It should be your documentation. Yeah. And there should not be any programming yeah. constructions in it. Or at least, at least uh, not that many. And this is actually adding programming. So it's, from an engineering point of view, this is much better because hey, you, know, you know what you're doing, you know what you're calling, but from a user point of view, I, I, this is not readable, not as readable as this. You're going to make much more mistakes with this than you can with this. So with the loop, you can mix that only advantage. Yeah. So if you have so if you have a list, there is no issue because you just put your list underneath. But if you have a dictionary, you in the past you could well you can still do do a dictionary here. Um, if you look at the examples, I'm not showing the examples. For the dictionary, you can still use the old way uh, because it will still work because it's still a list that is provided. Um, but for other stuff, you have to do it like this. The thing is, it does allow you to do stuff that before was, um, well, they have, for instance, a lookup plugin that is called Inventory Hosting. It's a very long lookup plugin name, so I don't like that either. But you can do stuff like this. In the old days, we could do the same by, by, by using something like this. And this is. Uh, uh, the same thing, and you pick everything from groups all, and then you distract the stuff that is in www. Uh, so I don't know if this is better. I can show you the documentation for this, and that's why I have this example inside. It should, but it's not in view mode, so I don't know if it did anything. Uh, did it do anything? No, it didn't. So can I activate this? Not like this. Let me see if I still had it open. <coughs> nope. Open, open. No, touch. <laughs> no, I didn't have it open. So, uh, and the, the silly thing is, I cannot look in the the projects because I cannot scroll down. Uh, yes. So I have to look for it. Let's see. Do you? Where would we expect it to be? Special topics. Do you see loops? Anyone? Lookups? 
is there, but looks looks probably not. There is this hand. And then go back. Search. Look at it. Search. Ah, yes. yeah. okay. I've never used this. Uh, loops. <laughs> but this is, is this going to go to the development documentation now? No, yeah. no obviously not. Uh, we can Later. Uh, and so in the examples, you can see it here. This is a normal loop. This is with a YAML list. Uh, <coughs> Here you have a loop with yeah, the list of packages. Yeah. And here is an example with dictionaries. And apparently for dictionaries you can just list them and it will still work. Which makes you sense. Yeah, yeah, it's because it was still a, but for complex loops, but they don't show it. Here you can check, see one with nested. It's actually this example that I, that I took. It is like this. There's no other way to do it than to call the lookup function in Jinja. And that's how it will be, unfortunately. Um, so enjoy. <laughs> um, the next thing, the next thing, I already mentioned this, and multi-threading will be, might be enabled in 2.5. I don't know if it will be, but it's, it's listed to be. But it will be disabled by default if it is in there, uh, you have to enable it yourself. Does it improve the speed using threading? Might think so, but it doesn't really make that much of a difference because forking the process in Linux is quite good as well. Mm -hmm. So we don't, we'll, we won't see a big difference. Um, maybe it's better in the sense that if you kill the, the if you stop Ansible, then at least the threads will be gone. But if you use SSH, the, the running SSH might still be running uh, left behind, running depending on what state they are. Uh, but it does allow us in the future to, to run Ansible natively on Windows, so for us that's a win. Again, example inside, and you go to the pull request with some information about it. That we already mentioned it, but in the future we will have native types in, 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 in Ansible, actually, because we're using Jinja mostly. Um, the problem with Jinja 2 is that it was written as a web templating uh, engine. So it only cares about outputting strings. Um, and we obviously care much about having the original type. The type either the one that you specified in YAML, because in YAML, depending on, on what you provide, it, it will automatically say this is an integer or a float or a boolean or a string. And we would prefer to have that type with the, the, the value. Um, but it's also possible that you call a Jinja function that returns a boolean, but then becomes a string in, in Ansible. Uh, I have some examples here where you would expect the value to be exactly the, the value in the type that it originally was, but if you do this for templating, this for, for YAML, and YAML is the first consumer of the playbook, this is a string for him. And this string is then provided to Jinja, and Jinja returns again a string. And we did have a way to, I don't have an example here, but we did have a way to cast it to an integer, which is actually sending it to a filter, a Jinja filter, which also actually produces uh, a string, because Jinja can also only produce strings. But there is some, some something in Ansible that knows about this, and then knows, ah, the int, so it parses that it's, it's sent to be to the int filter and then knows how the color will get back or be in the TG. But that doesn't work always the way you expect. And there are lots of issues open with this that are not fixed, but will be fixed when we have this uh, native Jinja 2, native types in Jinja 2 enabled. The problem is that you need a recent Jinja 2. And I looked it up, it's 2.10 that you need. And there are apparently some issues with 2.10. So probably there will be a 2.11, I guess. Uh, which will fix these issues and then we will probably implement it. We will disable it by default in Ansible version 2.5, but we cannot, <coughs> we cannot possibly ask everyone to update their uh, Jinja because all the operating systems won't have the latest Jinja and we do want to have a consistent way of working in 2.5.
even if you still have an old ginger or a new ginger, we still would like to have it behave as if you have the newer ginger. Otherwise, we will have to have two types of issues and we always have to ask what, what kind of ginger version you have. So the, thing, the, the, the idea is that we will ship ginger 2.11, I guess, with version 2.5, but it will be disabled. Or it will not ship with 2.5, you have to install it yourself. But for, from 2.6 onward, when this will be the default way of working, or maybe by then it's 3.0, I don't know. But the next version then will have ship Jinja with Ansible until we are certain that all the distributions have the latest Jinja provided, which will take some time because uh, Route 7 will probably never have the, the new Jinja. I, I don't know. I don't know if Jinja is coming from Epo, no, I think it's part of, uh, of the operating yeah. system. So you will probably don't, you will probably not have the latest Jinja. So you, we will ship Jinja too with Ansible as part of Ansible because of this. But the nice thing is that we will have proper types and uh, no more issues related to this. Then something that came up in the discussion with the network team, they were very proud um, and, and showing us the new stuff they have been working on. And functionally, that is correct. It's very interesting. They called it aggregate. And that's the first thing that people were hated about it because aggregate is very strange. Um, in Dutch, I don't know, we have, we have some concept about it. The thing is, if you provide a list of items to a module, now we are going to call that module for every item. And that's, that's not very efficient. What we would like to do is provide a complete list to the module and let the module handle those items. And the reason why we would like to do it is because we, want to, we may want to manage all the items on the system. And I give you a very simple example. If I want to have these five users and only these five users configured on the system, there is no way in Ansible to do that. You will have to list all the the users will you'll have to verify if there are other users than the one that I want to have and you have to remove them individually. What we would like to do if we want to do configuration management is to say these five users I want and these five users should be the only users I have. And there are several ways we could make that interface with the, in the playbook to make that work. The discussion, so the network team made something that only works for their modules, uh, which was not something that Everything should work like this if, if there is a need for it. So that's, that was the first thing that we said that, and the other people that didn't answer were not happy with it either because they were not aware of it. But it was, the next day it was being announced in, at Ansible Fest and it was paid for by customers, this functionality. So then we decided we want proposals about everything. So the first proposal I made was, let's not put this in the new release that you just announced. <laughs> But we couldn't do that. So the network modules already have some implementation of aggregates and they will have to get rid of that once we have the new implementation, which is can silly. We, can it's, you rename it too? And it will be different in, in how it works and maybe renamed, I don't know. But I started with a discussion where we could think about what's wrong with the existing one and how we would like the new one to work. And then you get a bike chat discussion about names, obviously, but also how it should look like. And in, in my opinion, what I propose is something like this, and this is actually a network example, where you have a different state, because now we have state absent and present, if you want an item to, be, to exist or not. The problem is, obviously, that it doesn't say what, would, what should it do with other uh, items, and there is a discussion about what should that state be then. Should it be a state or should it be an option to the module? That's very difficult. Uh, my proposal is we make a state and the name for me doesn't really matter. I call it pure. Why? Because idempotency is, a, is a, a concept from mathematics. And pure is also, if you look it up, it's also a concept in mathematics that actually describes this. There shouldn't be anything else that influences what I propose. So whatever is there should be gone. And this would actually be then the implementation for, uh, for making sure that only these two VLANs exist. Which means that first, the module should be able to support this, which is easy to do because we, we just make it understand what pure means. But also, the module should be able to tell Ansible Core that in this case, all this information should be provided to it. So we probably will add, like we now have supports check mode, we will probably add something like supports uh, aggregate, aggregation or something like that, 
or maybe this is something. I hope we call it, if this is called pew, then we call it supports pew or purity or whatever. If this is a different name, de declared was, was another term that was, was mentioned. Maybe we should call it like that. Um, the original name that someone from Ansible mentioned was uh, optimized. But optimized doesn't say what it optimizes, so and, and this is actually what is being proposed, and I hope you didn't, uh, you're not going to do it like that. But then you have optimize is true that you have to add. And you have to do it at the task level, not at the module level. And I think we shouldn't be doing something like this. If the module says we support aggregates, Ansible will send the complete uh, data set to the module <coughs> and the module will take care of it. And obviously in that case, if this thing says pure, it will remove what existed if it's not needed. But if it says, says uh, present, it will also get everything in a single go and will, will implement it. So you don't have to, to and then you, we don't need it in YUM and uh, specific support in YUM because that will actually do what we require. So this is my proposal, but it ended in a, in a bike shed with everybody being for and against several proposals, and uh, that was it. Um, here again, if you go to examples inside, you will end up at the proposal. I will make these slides available. I'm not going to do it because I'm going to mess around with the, my browser again. Um, another proposal that I made as part of this aggregates is that it would be nice. You, you often have a task that is not item potent and you want to influence whether it is changed and whether it fails. And in order to do that based on the result of the task, you always have to register the results of the tasks, possibly overriding a variable that you use for something else. Typically you have result or something, and if it was used in a previous task and you wanted it in a subsequent task, you, re you replace it. While you only need that result for that task only. So my proposal was to do something like this. This was the old way of doing it. We failed the diff. If, if, if they are equal, I guess. Mm -hmm. But we have to register this and we override maybe a previous result. My idea was to make reserved keywords and this is for me the, or the best thing. We've been discussing several things. It's short and it, it's, it does say what it's, if it is. But then someone mentioned, ah, it looks very programming, it looks like Java. Mm -hmm. And then everybody voted against this. And then the idea was, let's call it what it is. Let's call it Ansible underscore facts. No, Ansible underscore task underscore results. Dot, and then this, the, 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 the value. <laughs> and so we are engineering again something that actually should be decided by someone who is responsible for the user interface. I think what we're lacking is someone who has uh, a good idea how user interface or how users should be using this. Well, so again, well, this failed with the bike shift. Yeah. Well, 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 well. Result. The, the reason why they didn't like this also was because someone else could be using it in the playbook. Ha! Huh. And the convention we introduced was everything should be prepended Ansible underscore. So that, that we could not overlap with a, a variable registered by someone else. My implementation for this, because there is a pull request for this, is actually if you if, 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 if Ansible sees that this was already defined, if the variable already existed before you run this and you actually are using it, then it will give you a warning. Sorry, and beware, you're using this and it is now a reserved keyword, but it will still work as before. So it will not override this value because it expects that this is being used for something else. But then uh, Brian was saying, yeah, but I have a customer who uses this and uh, he will, yeah. So break everything, and so this is gone. And, uh, but this actually makes things easier also for testing. We, often we have asserts inside of test uh, playbooks, and you don't need those asserts if you can do it like this in some cases. I um, don't know if I have something else, no, that was it. Those were the things being added. Uh, that, yeah, there are obviously a lot more stuff, but this is the, the stuff that as a user you can uh, it makes a difference, or it impacts your playbooks. In these decisions, you have an influence as a community by just joining the meetings. 
I was just about to ask that question. Yeah. <laughs> Why can I go to this discussion? Joining the meetings or looking at proposals. The proposals, where do they live? They live in Ansible community. So not Ansible, Ansible, Ansible community. Mm -hmm. There you can see issues, and every issue is a proposal. Um, and there are many proposals. There are, uh, I showed you a few, uh, but there are a lot of proposals that are very interesting to watch. They are also changing the facts system, because now everything is in single namespace. Luckily, we did use Ansible underscore for a lot of the facts, but in the future, they want to do Ansible underscore facts dot Ansible underscore CPU, if you want to access the CPU value. And I told him, why two times Ansible? We are on Ansible, we know we're on Ansible, we don't need that. Why not make a reserved keyword facts, and that will contain the facts of the system, dot CPU. It's much shorter, you, it's yeah. easier to read in a playbook. But they said, no, 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 we, we voted in the past that everything should be Ansible underscore. Who is they? The core team. You can see, I can show you the meeting logs and you can see who voted for and against certain things. Luckily, I was able to um, defer the Ansible underscore facts dot Ansible underscore uh, CPU yes. from version 2.4. Otherwise, it was released in version 2.4. And it was not. It was at the last minute, it was pulled out. And now they propose something new for Ansible 2.5. The, the second Ansible underscore CPU will be CPU. So it becomes Ansible underscore facts dot CPU which is already there. Yeah. But I think they should introduce, because they're already adding a namespace, which is then, in this case, the facts dictionary, there's no need to call it Ansible underscore facts. But they once decided everything should be Ansible underscore to not conflict with variables that other people have used, and it's possible that someone used the playbook facts for something else, and in that case, just warn and say, sorry, this is now a reserved keyword going yeah. forward. Yeah. Find a replace. But they don't want to break stuff, and they do in some cases. They do it anyway, but in some cases, yeah. I think if they think too much about something, it becomes a problem. Designed by a committee. Yeah, indeed, that, that's a big problem. And that, there should be someone who, when I work at, as a freelancer with customers, you also have these kind of discussions. Yeah. And it's discussions about taste. And the first thing I do, I, I, I try to find someone who I think has a good taste, and I, in the meeting, I say, let's, let's pick one, some, someone who has good taste and can make a decision about taste so that we don't have to do it with everyone, that we don't have these discussions. And usually that works very well, because usually that guy is also someone who already has proven uh, to be, have good taste. Okay. And then he just makes a decision. And I, as a consultant, don't have to care about if it's a good or a bad decision, because the decision is not mine anymore, but also not a discussion between other colleagues. And I think in the answer we need something like that, but I'm not the guy who can propose something like this. Did you hear that? Yeah. Anyway, that was it. Thank you.